Ladies and gentlemen, that is Ms. Noir City. Greer. Festival? Yeah, that's Greer on that poster. <laughs> and I just want to say that uh, SIFT has been very cool because they actually printed one uh, specifically for this festival. And yes, we will sign that poster. <laughs> okay, so this is very exciting. It's a great night here. It's been a great festival so far. I am psyched. How about you to see like a big crowd? It's so house. good to see you all. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. How many people are uh, here tonight for the first time this uh, this year? So this is the first show this year. Okay, very very good. That shows you a lot of a lot of pass holders here. That's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Great. Okay, for those of you, how many of you have never been to Noir City before? This is your first time at a festival. Okay, I'm talking to you. I'm going to tell the rest of this is all just for you. Okay, here's the deal. Here's how this works. All right. Um, all of this is done. Uh, through the auspices of the Film Noir Foundation. Okay, I have been presenting Film Noir Festivals now. It will be my 19th year when I go to Hollywood and do it at the uh, Egyptian Theater in Hollywood in March. And early on in all of this, the decision was, you know, this has proven to be really popular. I mean, people all around the country come out to these various uh, festivals, and we did so well that it was, um, let's put the money that we make back into finding movies that were otherwise missing and restoring them. So that's what the Film Noir Foundation is all about. And Noir City is the exhibition arm of the Film Noir Foundation. And so um, that was created in 2005. And since then, we have either restored or preserved almost, uh, I think it's 18 uh, or maybe 19 films uh, since we started doing this. And, uh, and, and of course, the, the very important thing is like if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a noise? Uh, is there any point in restoring a film if there isn't an audience to watch it? So you all play an extremely important part in, in what we do. And if you want to know more about the foundation and perhaps become a member and really support what we do, uh, visit us. That's where all that stuff out there in the lobby is. All the books, those are publications that we put out. Uh, all this stuff, the ancillary stuff that we do to promote our work. Okay, and there's even a donation drive. You can see we're doing a little donation drive and uh, giving away Mark Furtick's uh, poster book from Fantagraphics right here in Seattle. Uh, so that's, that's the problem. And I want to thank uh, my colleague, the managing editor of the North City Magazine, Vince Keenan, who subbed for me this afternoon to introduce Lady Killers and Lady Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Vince. And now, for the show that we are about to present, what is your favorite Stanley Kubrick movie? I took her totally by surprise. Wow, oh, where do I even start? I mean, it would probably have to be, and you didn't have to convince me to say this, but probably the one we're about to see next. Okay, hey, very good. Greer understands the way this works. <laughs> no, that's not true. Yeah, it's sincere, not, sincere. It's not Barry Lyndon. Are you sure? Okay. All right, so here's the deal. I mean, if you, you, you are a very sophisticated audience, and you guys know your film history and all that, so you know the Stanley Kubrick one of the most visionary directors of the 20th century. Uh, maybe you don't know that he started out as a photographer for Look Magazine and a very, very noir-inspired photographer for Look Magazine. He grew up in New York as a kid, uh, was a movie addict. Obviously, he saw a lot of these films when he was a young man. And when he finally had a chance to make uh, a true first feature film with the studio's involvement, uh, he chose to make the film that you are about to see based on a novel by Lionel White called Clean Break about a racetrack robbery. Uh, the novel was written with a very unusual, inventive, backtracking narrative structure where everything would repeat. And I think that's what really attracted him to this project, that it was a non-linear uh, storytelling. Uh, and he cast this film 
like a, like Quentin Tarantino would have cast, you know, Reservoir Dogs. I mean, it's like these are my favorite actors from movies, right? I'm putting them all in this film. Uh, so this is in some way like the ultimate film noir cast with Sterling Hayden, and Colleen Gray, the great Marie Windsor, Elijah Cook Jr., Ted DeCorsia, uh, J.C. Flip, and uh, Joe Sawyer. It's an amazing cast of characters. He was smart and savvy enough to know that he wanted the guy to write the screenplay. He got Jim Thompson, who was not the legendary Jim Thompson that he is today. He was just a guy writing gold medal paperbacks that Stanley Kubrick recognized as having an incredible flair for dialogue and characterization. And so Jim Thompson wrote the screenplay. Kubrick did what directors always do. He hogged a co-screenwriting credit which Jim Thompson really, really hated, and he got saddled with an additional dialogue by credit when he actually wrote the whole screenplay. Uh, and when the film was done, uh, United Artists took the picture away from him and recut it in normal, conventional fashion. Partly at the request of Sterling Hayden, the star of the movie, who thought that changing the structure hurt his performance. Right? Uh, I'm happy to say, obviously, Kubrick and Sterling Hayden patched up their differences uh, because he would go on to make Dr. Strangelove and create General Jack D. Ripper in Dr. Strangelove, which is one of the great characters ever. Uh, and he admitted later that I was wrong and Stanley was right. This is the way the film should have been. Because Kubrick just said, I don't care, this movie has to be in the backtracking structure. And he was adamant about it. He was Stanley Kubrick from the time he was a young guy. He said, you will not do this any other way. I am deciding how it's going to be done. And they did that and completely tanked the movie, put it on the bottom half of Double Bills with Robert Mitchum and Bandito. And uh, it, 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 only a few very keen-eyed critics realized the super talent that was behind making this movie. It completely bombed when it came out, and uh, Marie Windsor, who should have been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in this film, she really thought, this was the one, this is the one. Um, no, it didn't happen. Uh, but this film now stands as Greer Sinclair's favorite standing <laughs> And a lot of other people's favorite crime movie, like, ever. So how many people have not seen The Killing before? Oh boy. Yo! Oh boy. Oh. What are we doing up here talking? Come on, let's go. See what the race is. Yeah. You are in for a treat. Okay, enjoy. Stanley Cooper, let's do it.